Good morning. It's time to begin our service. We can all stand, get into worship. Have an amazing service this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 86 9 says, or 86 3 says, Lord God, hear my constant cry for help. Show me your favor and bring me your to your fountain of grace. Restore joy to your loving servant once again. For all I am is yours, O God. Lord, you are so good to me, so kind in every way, and ready to forgive. And your grace fountain keeps overflowing, drenching all your lovers who pray to you. God, won't you pay attention to this urgent cry? Lord, bend down and listen to my prayer. Whenever trouble strikes, I will keep crying out to you, for I know your help is on the way. God, there's no one like you. There's no other God as famous as you. You outshine all others, and your miracles make it easy to know you. Lord Almighty, you are the one who created all the nations. Look at them. They're all on their way. Yes, the day will come when all will worship you and put your glory on display. Thank you, Jesus. You're the one and only God. What miracles, what wonders, what greatness belongs to you. Teach me more about you, how you work, and how you move, so that I can walk onward in your truth until everything within me brings honor to your name. With all my heart and passion, I will thank you, my God, and I will give glory to your name always and forever. Father, we just worship you. We thank you for who you are. There's no one like you. There's no one greater than you. And as we worship you this morning, we just have that in mind, Lord. There is no one like you. There's no one greater than you. The King of glory, the King above all kings, we worship you, Lord. Yahweh, we shout your name. We shout your name. We lift you up. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Let's sing this song together. This is the chorus. Lord of all the earth, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh.
your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all.
thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for this time of worship, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, we thank you for the peace here, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for peace that passes all understanding, Lord, over everyone here and everyone watching, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Speak peace over everyone here. In Jesus' name, peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can be seated. to stop worshiping when it's so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> like you don't know when to. <laughs> um, welcome this morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, welcome to any visitors. If you have questions or you need anything, Dave's your man. <laughs> um, Okay, we had an, uh, it's hard to transition. It is really hard. <laughs> okay, um, let's let's um, let's do our tithes and tithes and offerings. We'll say our scripture. <clears throat> okay, let's say this together. I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Cast your burden on the Lord, and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Amen. That's a good one. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for this time together. Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that as we give today, Lord, that, Lord, it's just a blessing and it's an honor to you, Father God, first and foremost. And Lord, we just thank you that there is no lack in your house, Father God, that there's no lack in your people, Lord. And we thank you, Lord that we are blessed to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. And we offer, these pray we offer these tithes and these offerings unto you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And we can say our, we can say our um, confession, because I forgot. Okay. <laughs> Look, I don't claim to be perfect. <laughs> okay. I stand on my ground of faith and will not be moved. I have given my tithe and my offerings in faith. Now I stand my ground, expecting God to work with my faith. I resist the attackers that would diminish my faith. I shall not be moved. Amen. That's really good. Okay. Um, children's workers can go to the back. Pastor Mike is going to come up. Oh, children are staying in. Oh, children are staying in. Okay, never mind. Children are staying in. Okay. Um, Pastor Mike, if you want to come up. Okay. okay. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. It's good to see everyone this morning. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. This coming Friday night at 7 o'clock is the memorial service for Vivian Fulmer. Uh, Vivian passed away a couple of weeks ago, and she's. we just want to honor her. She's actually... Um, one of the original members of Victoria's Faith Fellowship, and she's, I've known her longer than anybody else uh, in, the, in the church, and um, so we want to come, and we want to honor her, and, and uh, so that'll be this coming Friday night. And then the following Friday night, we are going to have a baptism service at our home. There's a couple of people that want to be baptized, so that's August the 30th, and uh, we're, we're gonna, I'll give you the time on that. I, one, of the, one of the people that wants to be baptized is a little girl and her mom says it can't be eight o'clock. So that must be bedtime. So we're gonna make it, I'll, I'll give you a time for that, probably six or 6.30, something like that. So please come out and, and participate in that. We'll have, a, we'll have a good evening that evening on that Friday night. So that's Friday night, August the 30th uh, for the baptism service. Everybody got that? 
This morning, um, you know, uh, God has had a lot of good people in our church over the years, and and um, so as leaders of the church, uh, we have uh, young. We're having younger elders, if that makes sense. You know, and, and part of that is the reason is, is because we want to plan for the future and, and have a good, strong leadership base for the future. And, and one of the things I feel I felt impressed and was encouraged to do is to have some of these leaders speak from time to time. And so this morning we have the privilege of hearing Mike Bustler is going to come. And uh, I told him he's, he's going to do good this morning. He really is. And uh, so I, I want you to give him as, uh, you know, more attention th than you do me, okay? So more attention, but not too much more, all right? But, but, but really honor him this morning as he brings the word, so. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. You hear me? One one? All right, well, good morning. <laughs> Now, if you'd asked me a couple years ago if I'd be up here preaching, I'd have said, nope. <laughs> or as like Ellie likes to say, I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. Well, the saying goes, never say never, because I'm here. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this day. As Christina prayed, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your peace, Lord. I pray that we'll receive everything you would have for us this morning, in Jesus' name. So back in February, Ellie and I drove up to Hershey, see an elevation worship uh, night they were having there. And it's just, it's awesome, just worshiping with thousands of other believers in the same room. In the middle, they had the pastor come out, and he preached for about 10 minutes. I don't really remember what the, pre the sermon was on, but I know he referenced a scripture in Matthew. A week after that, I felt like that the Lord was saying, you know, this is what you need to preach on, you know, build a sermon on this. I've gone through this, and I've been working on it ever since, but I've gone through this sermon in my head probably 50 times, so this might be the 51st time that I'm saying it, and out loud for the second time. I did it last night. So the title of my message this morning is, Let's Get Loud for Jesus. The verse was Matthew chapter 20, verses, starting in verse 29. And it says, As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind Two blind men were sitting beside the road when they heard that Jesus was coming that way. They began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them, but they only shouted louder. Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly they could see, then they followed him. The verse that really caught my attention in this was verse 31, where it says, Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them, but they only shouted louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. In this world that we're living in now, we're constantly being told to be quiet, I feel like. You turn on the news, you look at your scroll through Facebook, everything. The fact that it's become socially acceptable for anybody to identify any, as anything other than male or female. It's just crazy. Our mission, and there's a lot of people that still need Jesus, and we don't have to travel to a third world country to find them. Our mission statement on the wall over here is experience God's fullness and transform your world. Every one of us has a different world we live in. Different jobs, different schools, different friends, families, different areas we live in, and in different people we encounter daily. So let's get loud for Jesus in our world. I've been asking this recently, what holds us back? I realize these might be different for all of us, and I would encourage each of you to pray and ask God, what is keeping you loud? What is keeping you from getting loud for Jesus? For me, it's always been fear, a lack of confidence, and just sometimes feeling unworthy to even be used by God. The enemy, I've struggled this week just leading up to this morning. The enemy telling me that no one wants to hear what you have to say. You're not worthy. You see, the devil, he knows the weakest areas of our lives and is always trying to work his way in to make us ineffective ambassadors of Jesus. I've always been an introverted person. I try to avoid bringing any attention to myself but where I work and now I've been promoting to a manager it's really 
pushing me out in there. You can't really hide behind the shadows anymore. And sometimes I've been even nervous to post anything Christian related on my page because I don't want, I would worry about what someone might think. You know, so I just don't post anything at all. One of my favorite verses has always been Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We even have one of those pictures made from wood with the scripture painted on it that we've had hanging in our, in our living room. In Philippians chapter four, starting in verse six. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, they made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This is what Christina was praying when we got done worship. Another area that can hold us back is distractions. And the biggest one in my life is this guy right here. A cell phone. These, along with this that I'm holding my hand, has been one of the best, and I'd say worst, inventions of our time. I um, mean, we can get instant communication. I mean, it, it's, I was born in an age where these didn't exist, but that memory is gradually fading away. <laughs> we can sink hours into these things from endless scrolling on Facebook, Instagram reels, and the games I play on here. Sure, I have the Bible app, but you can easily get distracted while on your phone from the constant notifications that seem to never end. I looked at my weekly activity for my, face, for my phone last week, just curious, and it said I had my highest app was Facebook for seven hours. You know, it wasn't the Bible app. It wasn't anything else on my phone. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38, starting in verse 38, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Jesus does not negate Martha's hospitable activities, but is concerned with her distraction, worry and trouble about many things, which caused her to miss the, the thing that was needed the most, and that was to hear the word of Jesus. The last area I want to touch on is activities and just the busyness of life. There are times where I look at my work calendar, like today I look at and almost slightly dread the week because of all the meetings that I have planned out for the week. And some of them are like, ooh, I don't want to do that meeting, you know. Also look at my personal calendar, and it feels like our whole month is already booked up with stuff. Most of it all great stuff. Hanging out with friends or family, going to baseball games for my son. But by the end of the day, I'm either physically or mentally exhausted, or both. And all I want to do is sit down in front of the TV and scroll through Netflix. So how do we get loud for Jesus? A couple months ago, in junior church, our lessons, are, we had a four-week lesson on called Spiritual Steak. And this is more confirmation for me as we were going through this, this thing. Um, in Psalms 107, this was the memory verse. It also, well, it also said that the theme of it was what is your, what is your soul hungry for? The memory verse for that month was Psalms 107, verse 9. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Just as our bodies need good nutrition, good nutritional food to sustain us, our soul needs to be filled daily with spiritual steak. In addition to spiritual steak, they talked about three other categories. And that was spiritual snacks, spiritual dog food, and spiritual garbage. Now, spiritual steak, that's the God stuff. That's the good stuff. Things like reading the Bible, 
pray, praying, worship on your own and worshiping with other believers, fasting, coming to church, gathering with other believers, and so on. Spiritual snacks. Now, these are the things that are good, but not necessarily going to fill you up spiritually. These can be things like reading a book, hanging out with friends, playing video games, going to ball games, watching TV, movies, social media, etc. All, again, all good stuff. But we need to make sure we save room for the spiritual steak and not just fill up on snacks. There's, have you ever been hungry? You know, you're right before dinner. It seems like 4 o'clock, I start to get hungry. So I'm like, I'll just have a few chips. You know, just go get the bag of chips or a few uh, Cheez-Its or something like that. So I'm sitting there finishing my work day up because I work from home. Next thing I know, I'm like, half the bag's gone. <laughs> it's like, we got dinner coming up in a couple hours and I'm already like, ooh, I ate too many things. I'm not going to be able to eat. My son, sitting over there, also has a habit. We'll go out to eat. He'll get a glass of lemonade. <laughs> that thing's gone. Waitress comes by, hey, you want a refill? Yep. Boom, that one's gone. So by the time the food gets there, he's like, oh, I, I don't know if I can eat my food. He's, and he's, he knows this, and he keeps doing it repeatedly. <laughs> yeah. Spiritual dog food. This was, this was a fun one. The guy, he would said, you know, if you get a bag of dog food, cat food, or whatever, and read, read the ingredients, so let's say chicken, salmon, steak, beef liver, all kinds of stuff, all stuff that we would eat, but the guy's like, I tried it once. It was not good. <laughs> so it's things that are not necessarily bad, but things that aren't created for, aren't for us. In the example within the lesson he used, like social media, Facebook, Instagram, those kind of things, not necessarily bad things, but not good for a kid to do at maybe maturity level, you know? And spiritual garbage is just stuff that's bad. It's just stuff you, he's like, stuff you don't do as a kid, stuff you don't do as an, as an adult. It's like, have you ever been doing something that you know you probably shouldn't be doing? You get that little check in your spirit, that's the spiritual garbage. Even though books, movies, TV shows, games, social media can be, all be good things, to an extent they can fall into that dog food or even garbage category. For me, I know I'm not filling up Enough on, I know I'm filling up too much on spiritual snacks and not getting enough spiritual steak in my life. The one thing I didn't mention was music. Music is one of those things that can fall into all four categories, depending on what's out there. How many have you ever? How many has ever looked up the lyrics to a song? You got your favorite song? Look up the lyrics. Well, not me. <laughs> I don't do that. I've always appreciated all genres of music. Um, as a musician, I just love everything from heavy metal to classical, and I can switch from heavy metal to classical just like that. When we first got married, <laughs> I would throw in some, some of my hard rock CDs, occasionally try to sneak in some heavy metal, then switch to country and back to some Christian music. One time, Melissa was like, do you even know what they're saying in that song? I'm like, nope, not a clue. She's like, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. So I look it up, I was like, ooh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be listening to that. <laughs> For me, the first time I listened to a song, it obviously must have good drums. If the beat's not there, I skip. <laughs> Followed by the melody and lastly the singing. I've always heard the singing is just another instrument in the song to me. The voices is just another instrument used by God. I encourage all of us to pray, Jesus, am I getting enough spiritual stake? Am I feeding my soul with any dog food or garbage that I need to cut out? Another thing we should know is our testimony. Now, Pastor Mike has always mentioned before that we should have our testimony down to a five-minute version. In 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 15, this is out of the English Standard Version, it says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. We need to keep Jesus as Lord of our life and always be ready to share your hope and faith with others. For me, I've never really felt like I had a testimony or one that was really that exciting. 
um, I grew up in a Pentecostal church from, from birth and have been going to church most of my life. About a month ago, I felt like the Lord say, have you really forgotten all that I brought you through? Each one of us has a testimony. And just like everyone has fingerprints that are unique to them, your testimony is yours alone. I got saved when I was 16 at a revival in our church, the Pentecostal church I was at. And I was on fire for Jesus, you know. Until my senior year in high school, I eventually stopped going to church. I started hanging out with the friends and just doing all the things I wasn't allowed to do growing up. Kind of strict in the Pentecostal. Um, you know, I thought life was going pretty well. Got my first job, IT job, working at Peach Bottom Nuclear Power Plant. Bought a new truck, got a motorcycle just for the fun of it. Fast forward to when I was 21, I ended up wrecking on my motorcycle on my way to work. I was late, going about 50 mile an hour on a 25 mile an hour road. Uh, I came up on a turn too fast, went up a hill, and I, there was no way I could make that turn. I couldn't bank. My tire hit the gravel on the side of that back road, slammed me to the ground. The gear shift ended up wrapping around my left foot and tracked me. So I was being drug for about 55 feet along the side of the road. When it all stopped, I sat up and within 10 seconds, I felt intense pain in my left foot. Didn't know what, I was like, didn't know what was going on. I was able to sit up, I picked the bike up. Back then I had no cell phone, I only had a pager, which was useless at that point. I'm on a back road, not really that traveled that much, and I'm sitting there like, what am I gonna do? I, I can't, I'm, I'm still probably an hour's walk to work on a back road, probably like a 10 minute drive still. When a car drove by, and they kind of stopped, they backed up, and it was a lady that, that knew me. She, she was going to work herself and recognized me. She's like, well, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not okay, I need help. So she ended up, she drove me to, so again, we didn't have cell phones, so we couldn't even call an ambulance. There was no houses around. We drove the rest of the way to the Peach Bottom. They called the EMT team they had there on site, which came over and assessed me, got me prepped, waiting for the ambulance to then take me to the hospital. Fortunately, I left the hospital, had a broken a spiral fracture in my leg, on my ankle, and just a couple scratches. Walked away with it, with my life. I mean, it's fortunate, for this, you know, 20 feet this way, I could have hit a tree or something worse, you know. Fast forward a couple more years, and I'm at my second IT job, where I meet this girl, who I'm sure is the one, she's the one for me. We ended up getting engaged and moving in together. Again, Jesus, not my life. It wasn't the center of my focus of my life at this point. A few months later, I came home from work to find her engagement ring on my desk with a note basically saying it wasn't gonna work. She didn't wanna be with me anymore and she wanted me to move out. There were the signs leading up to that moment, so it wasn't a complete shock, but it still, still I didn't think it would happen. I was in it for, I, I made a commitment. One of my friends helped me move out I moved back into my parents' house where I ended up temporarily living in the camper because there was no room at the end, as you would say. <laughs> so I'm out in the RV. One of those really, and that, 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 that month or so was probably the lowest moment in my life. One of those really tough days during that time, I called up my friend to see if he wanted to get some dinner, just get a couple drinks, you know, hang out. We meet up at Chili's. Once the waitress comes over to take our drinks, he said, I'll just take a water. I think myself, water. That's not the kind of drinks I was thinking of, but I was like, okay, I'll get a, I'll get a water as well. Once we placed our food or we're sitting there chatting, when he pulls out his Bible that he had in the bag there, starts reading scripture and telling me all about what the Lord had been doing in his life recently. So we, we strayed apart. We both grew up in church. We knew, you know, we knew about God. We knew what he had for our lives. You see, it wasn't the meeting I expected, but it was the meeting I needed at the time. Fast forward another month or so, on my way home from work, I stopped to get gas. When I felt like I should give my first girlfriend a call, her name was Amber. Not sure what I was expecting, didn't think she would ever even answer, but she did. I was like, hey, would you like to get together sometime, just catch up? She's like, well, I'm going to a Bible study tomorrow, if you'd like to come. I'm thinking, Bible study? This girl didn't even know Jesus when we were dating. 
never even stepped foot in the church, and here she's inviting me to a Bible study. I was like, okay, sure. I was like, well, that Bible study happened to be at Bill and Laurie O'Dell's house, who were members here at this time. Jamie was there, too. Um, I started going every week thereafter, taking my guitar, learning, the, learning songs. That's where I ended up meeting my beautiful wife sitting over there. And the rest, as they say, is history. Melissa later told me that she was there that day with Amber. And she said, I feel like the Lord's doing something here. You need to invite him to the Bible study. Well, he was sure doing something all right. <laughs> so, when I was younger, I went deer hunting with my great uncle a couple times, but never shot a deer. Couldn't, I didn't see one. But I remember him telling me, once I got up in that tree stand, I needed to put the safety on, make sure the gun was loaded, and ready to fire, and just sit back and wait. When the moment came, all you needed to do was softly flick off the safety switch and wait for that right moment to fire. With deer, they can get spooked by any little noise. So you don't want to be like loading the gun, pumping it, and all that kind of stuff. Deer's going to bolt off. I felt like God told me we need to be ready when he puts that person across our path that he wants us to minister. So all he has to do is flick off the safety switch. Amen. In Ephesians 6, Everybody knows this, this part of the Bible. Starting in verse 10, it's talking about the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, next slide. There's more. There we go. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You know, I've always loved medieval times, learning about the English, French armies, battle strategies, and just what makes up the army. There's an author named Bernard Cornwell who writes a lot of historical fiction, does a lot of research uh, in these, all the different battles that happened back in the day. And he writes these books as a... Um, like he makes up a character. Like one, there's an Archer series about the English longbowmen. But he writes the whole story, and you're, like, you're that character. And it's, it, it's as if that was the one going through the, the war. So you can kind of get a first-person view of what that's like. You have all types of people that make up this army. You have foot soldiers, knights, archers, and so on, all coming together, being led by the king. What if the knights got fully geared up with all their armor and weapons, but just stayed back at the camp. They would be useless to the army unless they engaged. I felt like the Lord convicted me one day. He said, you have the armor, are you going to leave the camp? Hmm? Nothing like a swift kick from the Lord to get you moving. A couple weeks ago, we were in New York City, because we'd gotten, I got tickets to see Elevation Worship again that was, they were playing in Central Park. That venue was an open air venue that held about 5,000 people and not much seating. Really, it was just a grassy area. So we were packed in there shoulder to shoulder and standing for about three hours because <laughs> once you got up into that pack, 
I mean, trying to you know, get out of that was just, you know, excuse me, you know, I'm trying to get through everybody. It was hot, it was humid, it was July 31st. And I'm praying the whole time, Lord, please, we need some wind. I'm dying here. <laughs> well, midway through the song, it's, more, it's called More Than Able, we started to feel raindrops. And let me tell you, that place went crazy. Um, everyone started singing louder to the point where I could hardly hear the worship over the speakers anymore. I just heard the people around me. It's funny because last week, Pastor Mike was preaching, and what if we really loved the rain? Well, we were loving the rain <laughs> at that moment. I, I felt the Holy Spirit so strongly move through that place. I only took a few pictures because I've been trying to live more in the moment and less on my phone. And I snapped this one during that moment um, when we were there. There it is. So you can see the rain coming down. I mean, we just, people were fully engaged at this point. And I was just like, um, uh, yeah. I think I took three pictures the whole night and this one I was like, wow, look at this. The song we were singing, some of the lyrics to it says, you are more than able who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Can you imagine with all the faith in the room what the Lord can do? It's going to happen. Just let the way maker through. He's going to move. He's going to move. Anything is possible for who am I to deny what the Lord can do? The last day we were in New York, I found this place that had trying to find places in New York is just crazy. I'm looking for stuff that's close by, and you look like it's close, but you end up walking for like five blocks, <laughs> six blocks, which doesn't seem very far, but 15 minutes later, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yeah, so I found this bagel shop that I wanted to check out all week. We just didn't have the timing, so I was like, let's go, let's go to this bagel shop called uh, Nosh's, I think it's called. We get there, it's a small little restaurant, it's just a kind of like a hole in the wall, literally. And the line was out the door. I mean, it was like 30 people, 40 people in line for this. I'm like, all right, let's just wait in line. We're here, we walked this far, let's wait in line. We waited in line, got our bagels, and it was just like, if you ever watched the uh, Seinfeld, seen the soup Nazi, Nazi episode, it's what this lady behind the counter was like, Joshua was like, I don't like this woman. She's like, you're next, move all the way. Did I call your number? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll step back. You know, What's your number? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> this lady was crazy. But you, ha you know, you almost had to be in that environment. There was just so many people, a little bit chaotic. We finally got our food. We got our, some bagels, drinks. There's nowhere to sit. There's nowhere to sit on the street, nowhere to sit in the restaurant. We were close by Central Park, so let's, let's like a block and a half away. Let's walk over to Central Park and sit down there and just eat there. Now, as we sat down to eat, a man came over and sat down just to the right of us. And he said, excuse me, if you guys aren't gonna finish anything, could you, can I please have it? And don't throw it away. I'm thinking to myself, I've, I've been <laughs> looking forward to eating this bagel. And instantly, you know, I've been working on the sermon for a while and the Lord's like, is that really getting loud for Jesus? I'm like, dang it. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, look, you don't need this whole bagel. You can sacrifice. So I gave him part of mine. Leslie gave part of some of hers. We gave him a bottle of water, a couple of napkins, and he scarfed that thing down. He said, thank you so much. <laughs> Later that day, another man, we were on the subway going, uh, going to uptown Manhattan, um, and a man got onto the subway. Um, just asking for money, asking for change. I mean, I've seen this time and time again, working in Baltimore City, you know, people coming around, and I've always just tended to just keep my head down, just keep walking, don't make eye contact. Well, the last thing this man said was, please, don't look away from me. Again, I'm thinking to myself, man, how many times have I just walked past someone in need? It felt like him and I locked eyes instantly. And he said, bless you. I'm like, dang. <laughs> so here's this guy 
that probably has very little to his name, but he's still trying to hold on to his dignity as a human. In Matthew 20, verse 31, and the crowd said, be quiet. The crowd yelled at them, but they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And we have the Woodstock Jesus Festival coming up next month. And I encourage all of us to invite someone to come out. Even if it's just for an hour, let Jesus do the rest. Rich posted a, a video a couple weeks ago that just kind of touched my heart. He, he said, I felt like I needed to get on here and just share that there's festivals for everything out there. Art festivals. Anything you want, there's a festival for something. But he's like, there's no Jesus festivals. He's like, our intent for this is just to come and sit in the presence of Jesus and pray, Lord, just have your way. No agendas, anything like that. So I encourage all of us just to come out and be there because it's time to get loud for Jesus. So now I pray this message has encouraged some of us and hopefully even challenged some of us are we really filling up on spiritual steak or are we just eating too many snacks? So that's all I got for now. But I was talking to Pastor Mike. So a lot of our kids are getting ready to head back to school. Some are going to college. We're, t- we're taking Ellie to college this week. She's going off. Mark starts college. Joshua and I think Annalise maybe a couple more weeks, and might be soon, because she's in Thursday, she's in Pennsylvania. So I wanted to, if I could have Christina and Pastor Mike come up, with, just pray for the children, pray for the teachers, Rachel. Anybody else in here is in the, in the school industry? Anybody, anybody at all, just come up. I'm going to pray real quick. Um, I have a worship. We're, we're going to come back up. I have one more song we want to sing uh, before, we, before we end. So. Yeah, yeah, you too, yeah. So children, come on. Up here, get up here. Annalise, where's she at? Teachers, yeah, teachers as well. Isley, come over here, get over here. And I don't know if you want to bring Kayla and Jara up. I know you homeschool. Um, and Corey, you as well, as a teacher. That's not an easy job. I know homeschooling, our friend does it. stretch your hands forward Father God thank you thank you for all these children up here all the way from preschool to college Lord we thank you as they go forth Lord that your peace that passes all understanding rules and reigns in their life Lord we thank you for the teachers Lord give them grace as they teach these students Lord not all of them are saints we pray for the bus drivers as well Pray for protection around them as they go back and forth to school. And if they're driving, Lord, pray for protection as well. We just thank you for each one of them up here. Lord, in our men's prayer group, Pastor Mike always plays, prays, Lord, that our, our youth here will be the ones influencing, influencing the world around them and not, being, not the ones being influenced by everybody else. So, Lord, I ask that they are the ones influencing their friends and leading the way, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Like that?
And there is going to be power. There is power in that when we not only know his word, but we know his spirit as well, and we can walk in that. So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for Rachel, and I thank you um, for Corey as teachers, Lord, that they would see the needs of their students, Father God, and they would know um, how to help, and that they would have that um, godly wisdom, that Holy Spirit knowledge and wisdom, Lord, as to how to handle a situation, Lord. Uh, and, Lord, especially with Rachel in, in, the, in the world system, Father God, working within that, Lord, I know you can do great and mighty things even within that system, Father God. And I thank you that Rachel is a beacon of light to each and every student and family that she comes in contact with. We thank you for your favor yeah. upon this new job and endeavor that she's doing, Lord. We yes. thank you, Lord, that whatever needs to be signed will be signed, Father God, and that she'll be able to move forth boldly and confidently yeah. in you. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for these young people that you have blessed us with. And I do stand in agreement with their families, Father God, and with your word that you have spoken over them, that they will walk yes. in your boldness and confidence in who you created them to be. They will not back down. They will not be sidetracked by the world, Father God, but their eyes are fixed on you. I thank you that they do have strong foundations, Father God, and that they hear your voice, Holy Spirit, and they listen to none others, Father God. I thank you that as they go forth, Father God, into this school year, Father God, that they will go boldly and confidently, Lord. Their minds are fixed and focused on you, that they have your mind, the mind of Christ Jesus, to learn what you need them to learn, to be able to go into the fields that you have called them into. Yes. I thank you, Father God, for wisdom, Lord, for those who aren't sure what direction they are to go into, Lord, that you're going to start yes. bringing clarity into that, that divine calling into their life, that they will begin to see what their purpose on this life is, Father God. And I thank you and I just thwart any attack of the enemy saying there is no purpose. There is no plan for your life. There, You are an accident or not needed or wanted. And Father God, I speak your words over them that say there is. Yes. Jesus Christ, yes. the Son of God, died for you. There yes. is a plan. There is a purpose. Yes. There is a great commission on your life to get loud for him, to tell others about the hope that you have. And I thank you, Lord, that these are the world changers, Father God, that are going for yes. And we thank you, Lord. I thank you for each and every family that is represented. I thank you, Lord, that you give us those prayers and those things, Lord, that um, knowledge, Father God, is to needs, Father God, to know how to pray even before they are able to tell us. Father God, that we will know we will be intercessors for these yes. mighty warriors and uh, for your kingdom, Father God, that are going forth. We thank you, Father God, from, from the smallest to the largest of these, Lord, the youngest to the oldest, Father God, we thank you that you have them in your hand, yes. in the palm of your hand, and that we can trust in you. Yes. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? And I thank you, Father God, that there will be great and mighty things coming from each and every one represented here in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I was just going to say, if it's all right, Father God, we just thank you for the gift of wisdom. Yes, Lord. Lord. Talk in your words so much about the gift of wisdom and how precious it is. Yeah, that's good. Okay. But Lord, we also ask that you would give us, Holy Spirit, you would prompt us when we are supposed to do something that you're challenging us to do that might seem like foolishness yes. in the eyes of the world. Because sometimes you challenge us to do things that normally that wouldn't be wisdom, except when it's you. And just give us courage. Yes, yes just Lord. Just was preached today. Give us yes. courage to yes. take those leaps of faith when you prompt us. Yes, to know Lord. When the difference is. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right, so let's all stand. I encourage you to come forward. Get shoulder to shoulder like we were in the pit. And let's worship.
is amazing grace again we all know it just declare worthy is the land Back into order, who makes the orphan 
The son and daughter, the king of glory, the king above all kings. Rules and nations, with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all its buildings. The king of glory, the king above all kings. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross So you lay down your life That I would be set free oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you do This is amazing grace this is a better love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross So you would lay down your life That I 